All right, guys, episode two is the plumbing. Uh, just kind of let you know what we got going on. Got all our parts laid out. We did get the Hudson valve, uh, one inch bulkhead, Hudson valve, with our hose running, our hose reel. We got it set at about 150 gallons because we're only using a four gallon a minute right now. So we just putting some water in it to do some testing to see how it works. As you can see, I don't know if you can see in here, the Hudson valve. It's working good so far. We don't know if it's gonna stop, but anyway, we're gonna put another bulkhead here, half inch, for our bypass line, so we can bypass it back into the tank right here, on the opposite side of the Hudson valve, because we don't want bubbles from this going to this, creating air bubbles, which again will result in the cavitation of the pump. So be cognizant of that as when you're doing this as well. And then when we get our software set up, we'll probably put another bulkhead next to the uh, water or over here for our software setup anyway got our pieces trying to build it all out man just just bought a whole bunch of different pieces and trying to figure it out that's what we're doing so i end up bringing some back but it's all good I'd rather have extra than not enough so anyway hit you up in a second all good peace all right, guys doing a bypass now got the half inch i'll put tape on it i probably didn't have to but i did i have it so at the bottom of the bypass, I made a little angle, and it's essentially going to go right in this hole here, right where it comes out here with a 90 degree. So my bypass is coming out the fresh washer, which I swapped the fittings around. So we'll go in there. So we'll go right here, very short run, back into the tank. Again, I put a drop tube just to avoid cavitation from any air bubbles. So slowly making progress. We got the water going. We're just testing a almost there let's get a close-up and see how far we are from the hudson valve you really can't see it but yeah we got a couple Look, about another 25 30 gallons anyway we're gonna keep rolling and uh get this episode two wrapped up hopefully tonight gallons here but i want to i just noticed something and i want to point it out because i don't know if anyone else is experiencing this but when i was filling the tank up i noticed it was bulging uh, and I opened this, I don't know if you can see this cap here, it's like a, it didn't have a hole in it, it was just a cap on here, and I think you may be supposed to loosen it whenever you need air. Yeah, you can see. So what I did is I got a small, if you can see the small hole I drilled in there. I mean, it probably can go bigger, but I don't want to go too big and have debris or anything get in there. So I just did that as a vent hole to keep the tank from expanding. And I do feel it coming out of there. So just a little FYI in case somebody's trying to figure that out as well. So, all right, we got the tanks. Let's get, go ahead and open the valve. Make sure this valve's shut. That valve is shut. Pressure washer. Let me move this stuff out the way. The pressure washer valve is shut. All right. So let's see if we can get some water out of here, which is what I'm worried about, because that's feeding my pressure washer. Here we go. Flushing it out. Just again, just run a little water through it just to get the uh, any debris that may be built up in there out, which I think that's good too. And I'm gonna go ahead and crack this one right away too. Any debris. Awesome. That's good. That's good too, so let me go ahead and shut this off. And then we'll put our filter back in. Which is an 80 mesh screen filter. So basically it just comes in here. Sorry. Screw it on. I'm gonna take this off, tighten it up. And I use a uh, just a socket. It is a one and one eighth socket. too tight as plastic so 
And that thing does have a flow direction on it, so you need to make sure the arrow is pointing towards the pressure washer. So it's catching all the debris that it needs to. So yeah, that's it. We got water in the tank. Let's open the valve up here. Let's see if we can get something going here. Put that on, choke on, engine on. We'll go ahead and squeeze the trigger a little bit. Again, this is the first time that I'm doing this, so if it don't work, don't shoot me. Shoot me. Because we have to prime it up a little bit somehow, some way. Put the idle back a little bit. Chokes on. up looks good getting all that air out the system but once you do this you normally don't you know have to uh prime it again unless you disconnect those but that's why i got that ball valve right there so i can turn it off keep the prime on it so anyway check it out no leaks, all good. All right, guys. I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish some stuff up, and I'll wrap up this second episode. All right, guys. Continuation or the last uh, segment for the episode two on the trailer build. Just to kind of give you a heads up what I got going on. Uh, mounted the SH tank. I used the eye hook method with the straps. As you can tell here. So we got the 50-gallon SH tank. Again, this was a donation. So that it didn't cost me anything. Got the IBC tote all mounted in. You can see my legs I made. I got one there, one in the front between the uh, SH tank and the IBC tote. Got one back here with some half inch bolts. So that tank is not moving. I have my, obviously the pressure washer mounted. Got the bypass ran through here. I had to switch this around a little bit, but I got it right. So we're good there. This is my whip line that goes to my reel. I just put a little tie strap on it, a couple tie straps, as well as my feed line. As you can see, it's full. Ran the pressure washer for a while. Great, no problems. No leaks over here. Again, just to recap, got the banjo 2 inch to male MPT 2 inch. Got the 2 inch uh, female MPT to slip. Just kind of plumbed it out with a 45, went down to the ground. I thought about strapping it, and I may put some straps of some sort just to kind of keep that in place, but it, it's dirty. And then toward the front of the, toward the front here, I have, uh, I have uh, the ball valve, two inch ball valve with a, with a dump station or a bucket station. But I did have to, I had an, before I did any, I had it st straight out and it was kind of high off the ground, maybe 10 inches. And I would have had to build wood stands underneath the pipe to support it. So I decided to add the 45 to get it to point down. So, and, and look at the 90s I'm using, or the T that I'm using. It's more like a street T. It's not a direct 90. So that water flows a little bit easier. So, yeah. So, so far, again, I had to uh, vent the top of this with a drill bit. Just to give it some release. Some pressure release. So, we're all good. On the plumbing side, all the plumbing is plumbed, it works, it's all great. The only, the next episode is going to be a kind of a conclusion, I think. I'm going to mount my downstream injector box. I do want to put a, I got the bulkhead, I just don't have the uh, fitting, but I want to put a bulkhead uh, in here, half inch bulkhead, to, for my, uh, my downstream injector. So I don't have to drop stick anything, it'll just be, and I have a three-way valve 
with another bulkhead or I may just drill a hole and drop a hose in there just to suck water so when I rinse the injector out in the ball in the uh, remote box so all good got the plumbing done looks clean it's not the, I'm probably not the best in the world but it works um, and uh, that's all I got to say man it's uh I'm pretty impressed we got a couple of jobs tomorrow so we're gonna be doing some downstreaming and some surface cleaning and that's one other thing I do have to get done is get my surface cleaner mount but again I, until I get this thing working I really don't know where I want to put everything so I, I got a box over here I picked up off of Facebook for like 50 bucks I've got to paint it and I want to put it in the front here just to keep all my junk but I'm thinking you know building some type of racking system to hold the surface cleaner so I don't have to take it on and off the trailer. I don't want to take nothing off this trailer. When I get home, I want to be able to unhook it, and I'm done. Go inside. And I got to relocate my spare again. But yeah, all good. It's been a fun build so far. It, it, it takes time. So if you're building a trailer, or, uh, you know, contemplating building a trailer, just take your time. It's not rocket science. Very easy. I've learned a lot on the way. And I like my stuff looking clean, so when I pull up to a customer's, they appreciate just the look of the trailer. So, and I think that is just what we have here. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna conclude this second episode with the plumbing. It's been fun, man. It's good. So I'm excited to try it out, and I will, uh, I will. Uh, look at this broken bolt already. Huh. So I will. Uh, get some footage of the next episode here soon and the next episode will be mounting the downstream box plumbing the downstream box if i can find that fitting for that bulkhead i'll do that as well with the three-way valve which i have the valve so i just need to uh i just need to get the uh the fitting and the fitting is a half inch uh male npt to a quarter inch barb which is the uh downstream injector so anyway that's it for me I hope you guys enjoyed the second episode and look forward to the third. And I'll keep you posted. Peace.